Test in one, two. Yep, looks like my sound is okay. What's up, everybody? What's up, ladies? I know this is late. Some of y'all are probably asleep because you got to get up for work in the morning. So I get it if no none of you will not be able to catch the playback until tomorrow, which is fine. I'm going to leave it up. But um, I'm not working, so of course I'm up all kind of crazy hours, and hours like this work better for me, even though it's late compared to the daytime, because throughout the day I'm doing a whole lot, so that's why it's just better for me to do um little live chat late at night. So um, I want to try to make this quick. I don't want to be on here too long, but I thought it was imperative that I shared this information with y'all. Um, if y'all have been Keeping up with my series, Unhinged, um, I told you I've been doing a couple of stories on women who have made very detrimental decisions based on um, temporary emotional um, circumstances. And that's why I always tell people never make permanent decisions based off of temporary feelings because... You never know how things are going to change down the line. You never know how things are going to work themselves out. So you don't ever want to go into a situation in which you're doing something really detrimental to your life, to your spirit, to your health. Because I swear, you just never know how things are going to turn out. What's up, Lex? How are you? I know this is very off guard. I didn't forewarn anybody that I was going to do this live. So um, I won't be surprised if nobody catches it until tomorrow morning, which is fine. But I got to get it in when I can, because I know if I wait tomorrow throughout the day, I'm probably not going to be able to get to it. But I wanted to share some information, girl. I found out where um, Carla Hughes um the side chick who murdered her supposedly who she thought was her man she murdered his pregnant fiance thinking that he was going to leave um his fiance for her and because he would not do so she took matters in her own hands and carly who just took it upon herself where she decided she was going to go and take avis um bank's life so I found an update on him. I knew he got remarried and um, I heard about it, but I was not able to retrieve any information. But y'all, I got the information tonight and I just had to show y'all. I had to show, I, I just have to show y'all this information. I couldn't wait and hold it another moment. So I'm going to get ready to share the screen. Um, and again, this is in reference to what um keon pitman um what he's doing today so and how he's living today so first things first let's refresh our memory um again i told y'all a story about carly hughes she met keon pitman both of them was faculty staff um at a I think middle school or elementary school at the time and they was having an affair a fling um, going on, you know how it is when these teachers, you know, are constantly in the presence of each other. And what ended up happening was Keon and Carla ended up having a long going affair. And it got so deep to the point to where um, Carla became obsessed with Keon. She caught feelings for him. And long story short, because I'm not going to repeat it, because I'm sure if you didn't catch it, just... Um, Look into my archives and you'll see the unhinged video that I uploaded a couple of days ago about Carly Hughes. That way you'll get all the information. So nevertheless, um, she she came to realization that Keon was not going to leave his pregnant fiance for her. So she took it upon herself to um, actually go to the Pittman's household and she waited until his pregnant fiance got there. And that's when she decided to take avis banks life not only did she take her life she took her baby who she was currently five months pregnant with so nevertheless y'all this is where i'm going to go ahead and share the screen um with you all so let me see if i can go ahead and share this screen 
Okay, the light. Okay, the light. They changed some things around. Okay, so let me try to share the screen with y'all. So the first thing I'm going to do is show y'all how Carla Hughes is doing today. We're going to check on Miss Hughes. Now, as you can see, this is Mrs. Hughes. She has been doing time, y'all, since 2009. Now, mind you, the incident happened um the death of avis of miss avis banks happened in 2006 so i guess with the trial and everything going on she didn't actually get sentenced until like two and a half years later so this is carla hughes she is currently being detained where she's currently incarcerated serving a life sentence um at um i'm trying to see but yeah she's uh, serving a life sentence at in, in, in Madison County, which is in Mississippi. So y'all, this is how she looks today. As you can see, she's a little, she's older now. Um, and she's been incarcerated, like I said, since 2009. As y'all can see, her total length is life, meaning she's never getting out of prison ever again. So the reason I'm sharing this story with y'all, because I want women to understand how severe it is when you make temporary decisions, when you make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions, especially when it comes to these men, um, especially when it comes to a man that is not good for you. I'm not going to blame all men, but when you choose the wrong man, especially a man who you know is in a committed relationship, this is a potential consequence of what you can end up in what can possibly happen if you're not strong enough or woman enough to remove yourself from a situation that's you know is not good so anyway carly hughes is doing life she's never going to get out she's exhausted all of her appeals and that's that okay so i just want to refresh your memory and show y'all carly hughes and this is what she looks like today okay so I'm going to go to, um, let me see, is it this? Yeah. Now, it took me to do a lot of digging on Mr. Keon Pittman. And it seems to me that Mr. Pittman has been trying to lay very low. He's made it to where he does not have his own personal Facebook page. Uh, I guess he wants to make sure that no one can really keep up with him, but um nevertheless i was able to find mr pittman so what happened was i went on google digging and searching trying to do my research and i seen him let me see in this see if i can go back to it no okay now it's taking me to all kind of other stuff now but nevertheless i went on google and i saw this particular page here with him standing next to this plain jane um becky and i at first because she was holding a degree i mean some type of certificate in her hand i figured it was probably um somebody he works with or somebody um that you know was his is his boss or something i just i had this indication that she was somebody that was like a co-worker but as I looked into the comments section, one of the ladies goes in the comment and says, that's his wife. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, because he's standing there like a regular employee. He's not really being too affectionate in this particular picture. So not only that, I'm not going to lie. She just don't look like his type. And I'm going to say that as respectful as I can. <laughs> so I, it just didn't register so anyway what i ended up doing was i clicked on the comment and it says here now in this instance he's not using his um his his main name that he's known by kian he's going by Tariq z Pittman. okay so he's trying to make sure that no one can really like you know research him or locate him but i found him y'all so basically what it says is mr Tariq z Pittman is the owner and founder of ascension institute of botanicals 
In addition, he is co-owner of the Herbal Touch LLC with his wife, Crystal Pittman, located in the Detroit metro area of Michigan. He is a graduate from Alcorn State University with degrees in biology, health sciences, physical education, and later went on to Oakland University and the Michigan Institute of Natural Health for his hostilic teachings. Tariq's path and herbalism began in 1995 when he started to live um, holistically instead of living the traditional Southern way of his family and friends. And when he realized that medical school was antagonistic to his journey in his lifetime, Keon later became a public school teacher of science and health. So nevertheless, y'all, this is his wife. Crystal Marie Pittman. Lex, he know he can do whatever he wants to now, and he'll mo and he'll maybe most of the sisters, hell, maybe most of the sisters might feel like, ah, oh, ah, oh, I'm not trying to be next. Sad but true. Um, and I, I think for him too, um, I think the fact that he traumatized both of those black women, um, I don't think he feels safe dating or getting involved with black women i think that's his guilt the fact that one one beautiful black woman lost her life uh his pregnant fiance due to his selfish actions and then there's the other carla huges as i showed y'all earlier who took his pregnant fiance's life because he was playing and toying with her emotions and um you know involving him being sexually involved with her uh and deceiving her manipulating her making her believe that she stood a chance and unfortunately she took her anger and frustration out on his pregnant fiance so i'm not surprised that mr Pittman has decided to completely cross over um due to the fact that he has had too much bad luck with, with black women and this is bad luck that he caused because he was thinking with the head below instead of the head on his shoulders. So I personally believe that is why he totally decided to cross over. So we're going to check out some photos, y'all, of Mr. Pittman. And as you can see, he has aged. Um, he, He's pretty much aged. Um, also, this is fair use information. Um, this content is just being based off of my own personal opinion. I don't have any facts other than the facts presenting the case as far as the death of his fiance, pregnant fiance. But um, nevertheless, this is fair use information. So y'all, this is Mr. Pittman's new life hunty. He has him a Becky. Um, and, you know, she she's not an ugly woman. You know, I will say that, but definitely totally different um, um, from what you know, we ever expected. So this is Miss Pittman here. Okay. So I'm showing y'all a few of her pictures and everything. So um, you can tell she pretty much, you know, she she's like any other woman likes to keep her hair done up and try different colors and things of that nature and stuff like that. But Keon not only has a wife, ladies, he has a daughter. Hmm. Isn't it funny how you can get so caught up and hooked on these men and they turn around and move on and live a whole nother life and act and act as if you never even existed? Yes, honey. Keon has moved on, honey. And not only has he moved on, he has totally crossed over. He has him a new life, a wife and a daughter. So pretty little girl. So this is Mr. Pittman, y'all, and this is his new life. This is what Carly Hughes throwed her whole life away for. And he has moved on, honey. He has moved on, happy, still was blessed to have a child, even though um, his actions caused him to lose his very first son. He would have had a son by now. But, um, of course, that didn't work out. So, yes, y'all, this is Mr. Pittman and his wife and his new life. This is what he's doing now. That's his daughter. So, I say all that to say this, y'all. This is the reason why you don't need to be getting hell-bent over no dick. 
You don't need to become digmatized. You don't need to be obsessed over anybody else's man because a lot of the times you get so caught up in your emotions. Oh, here's a picture of her while she was pregnant. Honey, if Carly Hughes saw this, she would roll over and die twice. Ain't that a kick in the head, y'all? Look at him. <laughs> These niggas amaze me, bro. They will move on quicker than a big girl at a buffet, honey. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Now, she was pregnant four years ago. So this was 2018. Yes, honey. Let me see if we got a different Facebook. Okay, this is other. This is this is personal Facebook page here. See, oh, okay, he got slick. He put it under a different name. Look at him. Listen, ladies, I, I want y'all to pay attention. Look at how these dudes move on and live their best life while you sitting in prison. Look at him with his frat brothers. Look at him. Honey, he is not in grief no more. He been start grieving, honey. He's with his basic Becky. Okay, so he does have a Facebook page. If y'all want to be nosy later on and look because you're bored and ain't got nothing to do, go under Doc Pitt. D-O-C, Doc, last name Pitt, P-I-T-T. -T. So he changed that last name, honey. He 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 put he did he did it he used a different alias um as his Facebook because he don't want his in-laws or nobody being able to retrieve him or look him up. But I found his little leprechaun ass. I want to jump through the screen and just like do a drive-by on him. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> so Mr. Keon, y'all, he look at him, he still got that arrogant ass swag. That that's what made him cheat on his fiance. You can look at him and tell he has this arrogant and it's still there. It's still there 30 years later. He's still cocky and arrogant. Like, look at me. I'm the shit. That, that's the kind of demeanor he has, y'all. This is what happens, ladies. When you become so infatuated with them to the point you don't mind losing your life over them. This is what happens. They move on and they start fresh. Now, this is his herbal business. So you can tell he um he's into herbs, um, which is a good thing. I mean, I, I got to, you know, to play devil's advocate. I mean, I don't expect the man to grieve forever. I mean, he, he does have to move on. He does have to continue to live his life. But this is what I'm saying. Carla Hughes is doing life. She's doing life while he's living his. He's living his life and she's doing life. The irony. The irony. This is his family. Him with his frat brothers again. Wow. Wow. Yeah, honey. So like I said, Keon Pittman is living his best life. Um, I guess he has accepted the fact that he know um, Avis is never coming back and he knows that there's nothing he can do um, to, re to, to restore the situation. He can't correct the situation. So, and, and this is, I noticed this is a, something with men that women, we don't have the gift to do women we hold on to things um we we allow our emotions to to basically ruin us and men have the gift of being able to move on a man is not going to wallow in his misery as much as we do as women but in the different and the reason for that is because men aren't emotionally built like we are they're just not so while you're in your own world obsessing over them, being infatuated over them, losing your mind over them, 
losing your sanity over them. These men, men will move on. Men have the masculine mechanism of being able to move on. And Carla did not, couldn't see, couldn't see, um, she couldn't see the, the forest from the trees because at that particular time she was so angry and, and, and a hostile she allowed her emotions to get the best of her to where she just had straight tunnel vision she did not think about you know what i put myself in this situation i end up in prison this man gonna move on without me if i if i take his fiance's life if i take her life this is a younger picture of her y'all this is when keon and carla was together at that point in time she wasn't thinking if i take her life i end up in prison this man is going to move on without me regardless now this is keon in his younger days with avis okay this is the fiance his pregnant fiance who was murdered by his side chick now keep in mind how I found um, Keon and his wife was I was searching through Google and I so happy saw this picture and I just clicked on it. And like I said, I didn't know this was his wife and I just so happened saw the picture. And once I clicked on it, it was, you know, pretty much in the comment section that that is his wife. So this man has moved on. So this is a very valuable lesson that we all can learn in this situation if you ever get to a point to where a man has you so digmatized a, 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 a man has you so infatuated with him to the point you think you are thinking about doing something crazy you're thinking about doing something stupid you're thinking about uh doing try, trying to prove a point to him keep in mind that you have no control over the outcome you can do what you want to do, but at the end of the day, you don't get to choose the outcome. And Carla didn't think about that. Carla did make the decision to actually go to his house, follow his wife, I mean, his fiance, follow, you know, um, sit outside this woman's house, basically stalking her, waiting for her to pull up to the mailbox to get her mail. Soon as she goes in the garage, she follows his pregnant fiance behind in the behind her in the garage and she stabs and shoots this woman not even realizing the moment she did that her life was over she didn't think about nowhere down the line like eventually she could possibly could have met a better man she possibly could have still got married eventually kian is going to move on and that's what happened and that's exactly what happened all of that and this man done moved on. He done moved on with his life. So while you're up here, you know, holding grudges, and, and one thing about women, women, when we get on an emotional roller coaster, some of us don't know when to come off the shit. I mean, get me wrong. If you're going to cry, cry about it. You're going to be mad, be mad about it. it whatever you've got to do to release that pain, go ahead and do it and get it over with but the problem is when you stay stuck on that ride and that's what happened to carla carla emotionally she stayed stuck on that emotional roller coaster and what ended up happening was it took her over the edge and she's in prison away from her family away from her son who was grown by now she probably even has grandchildren at this point. What's up, Bougie Girl? Good to see you. For those of you who enter in the chat or who enter in the live, got no idea what the hell is going on. Um, I did a series called Unhinged, um, where I was talking about Carla Hughes, just to refresh our memory. Um, I did a series on Carla Hughes, which is the side chick who um killed uh her man's pregnant fiance avis banks this is avis banks here um carly hughes who we see here um was having an affair with keon pittman which is right here and at the time keon pittman was in a relationship with avis 
who is here in this picture. Avis was five months pregnant with his child. And because Keon uh, couldn't make a decision as far as wanting to spend his life with Carla, because Carla wanted to be with him, she took it upon herself to kill his fiance, his five months pregnant fiance. Our happy new year to you too. So um, I, I basically wanted to get an update on what Keon Pittman was doing because we already know um, Carla's in prison for life. She's never getting out. She's tried to appeal several times. She has exhausted all her appeals. It is done. And the only way she's getting out of prison, she's getting out of prison in a, in a body bag. I just hate to be frank and say it, but that's just what it is. So um, nevertheless, Keon is still living. He has moved on. He's living his best life. He has remarried since 2007. And this is his wife right here. <laughs> okay. This is the new love of his life. And this is Keon. Keon has, um, he's older now. And um, basically, he's uh, moved on with his life. While Carly Hughes is serving life. And this is my point to women. This is the reason why it's never good to put yourself in the position in which you become so infatuated with a man that you're willing to lose your life, lose your freedom, just to prove a point to him because you're so angry with him rejecting you. Because at the end of the day, as you can clearly see, this is a prime example. These men move on. Why you still stuck in your feelings? What's her name? I forgot her name just that quick. Why you oh Crystal? Why you still stuck in your feelings? The holding grudges. These men move on. This is his new wife, and he had a he had a daughter. So. Carly Hughes ruined her life basically for nothing. This is his wife and this is his daughter. So Keon Pittman has turned a new leaf. Not only has he turned a new leaf, <laughs> I believe he's scared of black women now. <laughs> He's scared of black women now. He don't want no parts of us no more. Because, <laughs> honey, he went all the way to the other side, honey. He went all the way. We scared the shit out of him. <laughs> and try, believe me, I'm not making fun of this situation. I'm not rejoicing off of two women who lost their life, but it's common sense. He he has he, his fiance is in the grave, and one is in prison for life. He's scared of black women, y'all. He don't want no paw sauce. <laughs> he don't want no paw sauce. So when he started his life, he had to go all the way white, honey. He couldn't do us no more. He did not want to date no more black women. We traumatized the hell out of him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, so this is the new love of his life, y'all. Let me go back. Yep, him and her with little girl. And look at him. He's just as happy. Honey, if Carly Hughes could see these pictures from jail, she would want, she would want to break out and escape just so, just so she could take his ass out this time. <laughs> yeah but y'all this is basically this is the reason why i decided to do this quick live tonight because i just had to show y'all i had to show y'all that keon is living a whole totally different life and i get it you know i get it you can't grieve all your life you can't walk around you know being um feeling guilty you know, for the rest of your life about 
something that, you know, you cause, you got to move on. I mean, he can't bring Avis back. I get that. But it's just, it's just the, the audacity for me, the audacity. And really, Carla can't get mad at nobody but herself. She cannot get mad at nobody but herself because nobody told her to carry her behind to that man's house and pow, pow, and stab his fiance. She was so angry with him that she took it out on another innocent woman that had nothing to do with it. Lex says, shaking my head, and that's probably true. She knew he was with someone else, so I don't feel sorry for her sentence. And, yeah, you really can't, you know. And this is the reason why, you know, sometimes as a woman, you don't know how far your emotions will take you. Have you ever, like, done something out of emotions, and then you sit back and reflect, and you be like, you know what? I shouldn't have did that. Or I should have, you know. But it was like, in the heat of the moment type of thing so i say that to say this this could have happened to anybody i could have been a call of huges i've been in some situations listen where i've had dudes that i really thought i had something with i found out they lied to me they deceived me they had fiancés we, we've all listen every woman at some point in time has been played We've been lied to. We've been manipulated. We all have been there. All of us have. If not, you at least been there once or you know somebody else who has. But for the most part, all women have experienced some form of rejection. You done, set, you done spent quality time with this man, um, especially if you've been intimate with, the, with this man. You start catching feelings. You know, he's saying the right things, making you think it's really going to be something. And you get your, you set your hopes up, you set your heart up, thinking that it's really going to be something, only to find out this man has another woman, or he's currently thinking about seeing somebody else. You know, I say that to say, all of us have been in a situation to where a man has driven us crazy enough to take take things to a whole nother level. We all have been there. Lex says, yes, cursing people out. And I've had to do myself being a single mother. I started a business and I'll ask for child support. I still clear mocha. And you know what? And Lex, there's nothing wrong with that. you got to protect your peace. Sometimes it, it, it completely keeping a man out your life. Um, meaning not asking him for child support just so you could avoid having to give him visitation because you don't want to see him and deal with him. Sometimes that's what it takes. You got to do whatever it takes to protect your peace. And I've always been different. Uh, women uh, women handle their pain differently, and it's not that I'm better than any other woman, but I'm like this. Once a man has made it clear to me that he don't want me, I moved. I, I dodged the hell out the way. I dash out. Because I'm not going to stand there and let you reject me any further than what you already have. Once you done made it clear to me that you don't want me, I'm not going to run after you and keep hurting myself. I'm not going to help you hurt me. And that's what women, that, that's what we make the deadly mistakes. You don't help a man hurt you. If he say, I don't want you, if he start making excuses, when you keep asking him, is he planning on leaving this woman? How long you going to, what plans do you got? If he keep beating around the bush, he keep coming up with excuses, or he letting you down easy by saying stuff like, you you know, you a good woman. I just don't deserve you. You a beautiful woman, but you know, I know I'm not the right man. Even if it's BS, the fact that he's telling you, you he knows you don't deserve him, those are red flags. And sometimes they don't feel that way. Sometimes they just say that to let you down easy. But I'm like this. Even if you're saying it just, just to soften the blow, 
once a man that already told me he's not feeling me the way I'm feeling him, I'm running out the way like there's a drive-by. I'm, I'm running for my life because I got to protect my heart and I got to protect my peace because rejection makes you do crazy things, ladies. It makes you do, it takes you to a certain level you didn't even think you had. Now, keep in mind, Carly Hughes was not a, uh, was not a hood girl, okay? Carly Hughes just ain't been in and out of prison. There was nothing indicating that she was not emotionally mature. You get what I'm saying? It's just that she got in a situation with a man she really felt hard for. And then when she found out that he was never going to leave his fiance to be with her, it took her to a whole other edge. So a lot of the times, if you want to avoid a fight, don't even get in the ring. Do not even get in the ring. The moment of you you dealing with a man and you find out he has a pregnant fiance, he's living with a woman, he's staying with a woman, even if they're not married, you need the you don't I don't even want to involve yourself. Don't even fall for the well. I'm going to file divorce. I'm not um if he is married, I plan on filing divorce. Or if they're not married and he says, well, you know, I'm only sticking around for my child. He start making up all kind of excuses and stuff. All that is is just game to keep stalling you and keep stalling you so you can be available to his personal needs. And after he done got tired of sleeping with you multiple times, after he done got tired of whining and dining you, after he done got tired of lying to you, lying to his fiance, he know it can't go on forever. So he gonna have to cut somebody off somewhere. And guess who it's gonna be? It's gonna end up being you. A man knows he can't juggle two women forever. At some point, he gonna have to make a choice, especially if the woman he really wants to be with, he discovered, she discovers that you are, he's dealing with you on the outside. Guess what? A man is gonna put himself first. If it, if it means cutting you off just to make sure he's straight, just to make sure things are good on the home front, he's going to do that. And guess who's going to be left holding the bag? It's going to be you. You're the one that's going to have to emotionally heal. You're the one that's going to have to emotionally struggle with getting your mental and your emotional and spiritual back together while he's moving on, living his best life. Because let me tell you something. Even if Carla would have never took Ava's life, he still would have been doing what he doing right here. He would have been doing that with Avis. Carla was never the woman he was going to be with for a lifetime. Listen, action speaks louder than words. You can sit up here all day and tell me how much you love me, how much you like me. You could tell me I'm beautiful all day. You could tell me I'm pretty all day. You could tell me I'm a good woman all day, but action speak louder than words. You can tell me that, but you still going back home every night to your woman. Every time you climb out the bed, after we done got doing what we doing, you you going you going you going back home to her. After we done got done handling our business, you going you're gonna wash your balls in my sink with my Irish Spring soap. And you getting in your Honda Accord and you pulling out the driveway and you going back home to your wife like nothing ever happened. At the end of the day, your most of your money going over there. I don't care how much you're paying the bills over here. The majority of your money going over there. That's where you that's where the money going. At the end of the day, um, I got I got I got the um I got to wait around to see you on schedule, on a specific schedule. I got to, I got to put in an appointment for you to see me. And I'm sure not going to see you on the holidays. I'm not going to see you on Valentine's Day. I'm not going to see you on Christmas. I'm not going to see you on, on your birthday. All the special days are going to be left for her. And I'm going to just get whatever days that's left over. And let me tell you something. 
as a woman, you got to be realistic with yourself. I personally, I don't make, I, I, I don't, I would not make a good side chick because I'm very possessive and I want all of my time. I don't like part time. I want all the time. I don't like renting dick. I want to own, I want to own one. I don't do rent a dick service. I don't like, I don't like pre-owned dick. Okay. I don't do pre-owned dick. I need a, I need a man that's going to always have time for me and only me. I'm not co-signing on your dick with your wife. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a dick co-signer. When I call you and I say, hey, I want us to go out to eat. I want us to go out to lunch. I want to be, I want to be able to do that. I don't want to hear why I got the I got the wait and, and make sure, you know, I don't know if my wife gonna have me do something, you know, well, me and my wife make plans this weekend. I, I'm not I don't see how women can tolerate that. I don't have the patience for that. I'm I'm too spoiled and I'm too selfish. I'm I'm very I'm very stingy. I don't like to share. When I want my time, I want my time. I want all the days, not only the days you have available. And this is the thing about it. When you decide, chick, you the one that got to be on your best behavior because you don't want to make him mad, knowing if you piss him off and make him mad, you know, he still has somebody he can go be with and you don't. Facts, because I'm damn near fine, break my neck looking like, what the F you talking about? That's what I'm saying. I just... I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't make a good side chick. You know, you're not going to um put me on schedule and I got to call you to make an appointment. To, to me, that, that takes the joy out of having a real relationship because you want to be able to enjoy your man freely. Um, you don't want to have to keep sneaking and creeping. Y'all got to hook up and meet up out of town. You know, he don't want to take you in certain places because he don't want to run into certain people, you know, and, and it's worse now because you got what's called social media. A lot of these dudes, they so trifling. They'll be to sit up there and screw you the night before and on a Facebook page, turn around and take a selfie with their wife like they ain't even been with you the night before. I mean, as a woman, that, that should make you feel very insignificant every time um you keep giving yourself to a man over and over and over and over you putting in overtime on, on a blow job you got to put in overtime you you got to go all out your way when you do get them when you do spend time with them because you don't know when the hell your next appointment gonna be so you you got to do all these extra tricks and and, and um you got to put in all this overtime you know just to try to, to keep him satisfied because you know at some point he got to go home with his wife so a little bit of time you do have with him you got to really go all out and try to prove that you're worthy because you want to give him something to <laughs> you you feel the pressure of having to give him something to remember when he goes home at night and lays next to his wife y'all don't see the sick irony in this yeah and then you know, i say not to mention you know it's 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 no point in even talking about stds anymore because people still have a have a raw sense we, we've been we, all of us are educated enough to know they don't even have sex education programs in school and you and you still got people walking around here red raw dog why you think all these outside babies and stuff are being created people don't care about aids people don't care about stds you got people they used to worried about covid but y'all ain't worried about syphilis y'all ain't worried about gonorrhea y'all ain't worried about y'all ain't worried about all this other stuff that's just as deadly so it's sad but it's like talking about STDs and, and, and protective sex, that's like taboo now. Because the truth is you, you have a lot of these men, they, they're not going to wear protection. 
and you have a lot of women they're they're intentionally not allowing women to wear protection because they want to get pregnant they want to secure the bag so it's to the point now people rather put their greed instead of their health first that that is the that is the the ways of the, the generation you know we definitely in our last days because people will put their greed first before anything you know unfortunately flesh flesh is is taking over common sense it's, it's taking over wisdom everybody's trying to fulfill flesh and what a lot of people don't realize is that flesh is very greedy you can never um you you can't starve you know the the flesh will always feel like a starving i don't care how much you feed the flesh you you can never satisfy flesh that's why it's called flesh and, and it takes you to have spiritual discernment in order to understand that but realize any keep in mind every time you give your yourself sexually to a man what you're doing is you're bonding with him it's it's it's, it's a spiritual it, it's it, it, you start to build see people after people realize sex is not just sex sex becomes it's, it's a spiritual connection it's a spiritual every time a man lays with you his spirit is connecting with yours so anything that is in that man any of his his bad habits his spiritual demons um whatever spiritual um traits that he has when you connect with him it also becomes a part of you sad but true and i can and i just and and i can that's just plain dumb exactly show me the paperwork that's what i say lex show me the paperwork bougie says i had a high school classmate who killed his side chick who was pregnant with his twins by him and his wife mm-hmm mm-hmm it's and and, and, it, and it goes either way it could have went the other you know it, it could have went the other way god forbid if carla would have ended up pregnant and Keon didn't want to face telling his wife that he could have took her out. And it's been situations. I've, I've talked about stories like that on my other channel, um, Mocha's Cafe de Paris. I talked about there was a military man, a military guy, very prominent dude. You look at him, you wouldn't even think he was that kind of dude guy. He was smashing a female who got pregnant with his child. And mind you, he already had a family. He had one child with his wife. He already had a family. He was trying to talk her into getting an abortion or whatever the case was. She took it upon herself and told him that she wasn't going to do it. So he took her to meet her maker. So either way, it's a dangerous game because either the man could snap, either the side chick could snap, or even the wife or the girlfriend could snap. Who's to say if Avis really knew what was going on? Hell, she could have been the one to take um take um Carla out. It, it's just not worth getting yourself involved in these type of situations because it's very emotional. And when, as first of all, as a woman, you got to be honest with you. You got to know how you are. I am a Scorpio, and Scorpio women by nature, we are overly emotional. So I, I refuse to put myself in a situation in which I, I get attached to a man that I know already had a prior attachment. I cannot do it because once my emotions get the best of me, I can't say for sure how far I will go because if you look at a lot of these women that have snapped, all of these women were not criminals. All of these women were not mean women, were not 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 trouble women. You know, they had their issues. But what I'm saying is you ain't got to be a woman. I got a lot of issues to get driven to this point. You could be a good woman. You go to church, you, you pay your bills, you work hard good women can get caught up in situations like this i could have been a caller y'all could have been a caller it got nothing to do with oh she crazy she digmatized 
all of us have been there. This is just by the grace of God. We didn't accelerate it to the point she did. Or you could always be there. So, um, like I said, Betty Broderick was, was not a, a, a murderer. Um, what's the, the, the other lady that I did my unhinged on that ran over her husband multiple times because she caught him having an affair with his secretary. Her name was, um, her name was Carla, Clara, Clara Harris, Clara Harris. She wasn't not a criminal. She was a, 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 a Caucasian suburban mom who owned several dentist practices and she snapped. So this can happen to anybody. This is different women, white women, black women, educated women, women who got money. It don't matter. Once you, once you let the wrong nigga get in between your legs and in your head, it's over. It's over. Once you don't let him penetrate you sexually and mentally, you gone. It's like, like a dope fiend. Like, you know, a dope fiend, when they inject that needle in them, once it get in your veins, once you get that first hit, sometimes it's, it's hard to break from that. And, and some of these dudes are so toxic, you become toxic just like them. Kenyon, he was a toxic dude. He was very toxic because he's sitting up here building a life with his pregnant fiance, having his first child. And from what I read, this ain't the first time Avis had problems with Keon being a playboy. And maybe in her mind, I'm just assuming maybe she felt having a baby uh, would, would be a, a step in the direction of making him a changed man, you know, whatever. But that was her dude. So she had every right to want to have a child with him, to want to deal with him. But on the other hand, what he messed up at was he underestimated and and thought that uh that call that 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 caller was slow. That he can just run back to her and smash and get it as much as he want and still go back to his his pregnant fiance. And some of these guys, uh, they egos make them think they can get over on women and nothing ain't going to happen. And it's always that one time you think you're going to get over, you're going to cross the wrong one. And Kenyon, he crossed the wrong one. That's why he with a white woman now. Because he's scared of black women. He crossed two black women and he had got to discover the rude awakening. His leprechaun behind. He went from <laughs> he went from a young leprechaun to an old leprechaun. <laughs> um Lex says, when you are grounded, not perfect, they say we are too much. No, I'm smarter than bull s. And just keep it moving or try a friendship instead of being between my legs because I'm not going for it. Yeah, you have to set boundaries. You don't set boundaries. You can end up in these type of situations, man. But, um, you know, I'm not going to keep y'all all night. But I want to tell y'all about this little leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Keon Pittman is remarried. Um he has moved on he has uh continued to live his life he's rebuilt his legacy um you know he has a family he has a daughter um so he moved on and you know i mean i guess good for him i mean what other choice he had he can't sit around and feel sorry for himself for the rest of his life but it's just so sad how um two women really thought they was going to build something to have something with with this man and um unfortunately uh you know it didn't go that way according to plan this man moved, started a whole new life and he done moved on he still has his family i could only imagine how his in-laws feel how avis family feels because this man just done moved just done simply moved on he still got his mother 
he still got his family. And it's unfortunate that um, Avis's family, they lost their daughter over his foolishness, over his selfishness, you know, and he has moved on, you know. So anyway, anytime you get yourself in a situation, uh, you know, just look down the road and keep in mind the situation you could be getting yourself in. Um, wait a minute. Well, he got divorced. What do you mean divorce? I ain't saw that. What do you mean divorced? Hold on, let me see something. Why he got divorced? Let me see something. That's strange. Because his wife don't have divorced on her page. Let me try to see something. You see if he got how old are these pictures i don't know why he got divorced he was with his wife unless he just recently this picture they took july of this year okay that's strange why he got let me go to her page Let's see if she got divorced. I just peeped at y'all. Let me see if she got that on her page. About. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, she don't have on her page, but that she's married. No relationship info to show. But she got a picture of them. But, you know, that don't mean nothing. I know some women who still keep their profile picture of them and their husband together. And that don't mean that they together. I don't know, y'all. I just picked that. Because these pictures she got of him, these could be, these are old pictures. Like, this was October 2022. I don't know, y'all. I'm going to have to dig and do some more research. But most women who are married will put that they are married. You get what I'm saying? Nah, ain't no... I don't think they trying to keep it quiet, um, um, Lex, because my thing is, if you're trying to keep it quiet like that, you got a picture, y'all. And he actually got divorced on his. He got divorced. He, yeah, I don't, something, something in the buttermilk ain't clean. Because he got divorced. And she, neither one of them are claiming that they married. Now, I don't know if this was recent or what. I'm trying to see what's the most recent. That's the most recent picture that they took back in June. Um, and I'm not friends with him to go on his timeline or whatever. So um, I don't know, y'all, but to me, he got the word divorced. So... um that right there that's most most married couples they're not going to put their divorce and who's to say Keon probably still up to his old tricks or either he just realized maybe he got married out of feeling loneliness maybe he got married out of trying to move on trying to move forward you get what I'm saying trying to be normal I'm trying to, uh, yeah, I'm, tr um, I know they're in a state of, uh, Mississippi. Let's see. I'll check right quick while I'm on here with y'all. I'll check. And if not, I got other ways. I, I'll see if I can check court records. 
It brought a house service. And, and but you and, and that's very recent. And um Kenyon Kenyon is not popular enough like that for them to put that kind of information out there. You get what I'm saying? He's not like a celebrity or anything. So I don't see where they're going to have that. But I'm going to see if I could pull up a do court document. So I'll do an update. Um, I'm going to see if I can go to the magistrate court and um, pull up that information. But one thing I know, most married couples, they're not going to put divorced as a status. And my thing is, neither one of them got that they are married. And if you think about it, on his profile picture, he ain't got a picture of him and her together. She does. This is his profile picture. That's her profile picture. This was, what, 13 weeks ago? And this don't mean anything. Anybody could take a picture and post it. That don't mean that was the last time they was actually together 13 weeks ago. You get what I'm saying? Les says, uh, I'm sorry, I can't do a week, man. He don't have to be a short, but at least have balls and stand for something weak. Yeah, um, I, I, I think um, something ain't adding up here. Something ain't adding up because, like I said, married couples, Um, because I got a Facebook page and my husband has a Facebook page. We both got on there that we are married. So I can't see both of them that's been married since 2007. I can't see neither one of them not acknowledging each other on the, on, on the Facebook page. It just, that don't make no sense to me. But I'm a, I'm, I'll check, you know, I'll, I'll keep y'all updated and let y'all know. But um, ladies, this is a prime example. Do, do not, do not um get yourself in a situation in which you get so upset with a man that you're willing to ruin your life because he's going to move on with his and that's really are they facebook friends let me that's a good question let me check bougie good question let me see and you know and that's a good point because most couples that are divorced they 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 don't they don't they're not friends on the facebook page okay he doesn't go by keon he goes by let me let me look up his facebook page doc pit let me see if they're friends doc yeah they still friends but that don't mean anything because my uncle him and his ex-wife can't stand each other and they Facebook friends. And the only reason my uncle want to be Facebook friends with his ex-wife because he likes stunting the new women he with. He loved to post the new women he with to make my aunt mad. <laughs> they both real petty now. So you can't really go by that because you have some ex-husband and ex-wives. They friends, they Facebook friends with each other because they like the dog on like you know what I mean? They like the they like the stunt and throw shade and throw subliminal shots at each other because that's what my uncle does. And then my aunt, she be dressing all sexy up, looking like Shug Avery. I'm like, lady, if you don't go sit your Shug Avery, I would show up, but I don't want to. But um, you can just tell she really, <laughs> she really like, you know, what I'm saying, trying to make my uncle feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you missing out on something. You miss, And I'm like, lady, with that Shug Avery dress you got on, my uncle is not checking for you no more. Sister, remember your name. Sister, remember your name. Sister. <laughs> so, you have some couples. They will be, they will break up and still be Facebook friends with each other because they like the stunt. So, you know what I'm saying? That don't mean they together now. But that's just weird that he got the actual words divorce. But my thing is that that's even more the reason, Bougie, because I'm like this. If y'all why if y'all know y'all can see each other page. Why would you put divorce if y'all not divorced? You get what I'm saying? That's even more of a confirmation because if 
me and my ex-husband, we Facebook friends, and you got divorced on your page, and we supposed to be together. You know what I mean? I'm not about to sit up there and, and, and be friends with you if you're not claiming me like that. So evidently, him or her got a mutual understanding. But you do have ex-husbands and ex-wives that are Facebook friends because they like to flex and stunt on each other. Because my uncle doing that shit right now. Every time he get a new car, he posting it on Facebook and stuff. I'm like, bro, why are you still trying to make your ex-wife mad? <laughs> but yeah, th that's new news to me, y'all. I didn't even know. I didn't even know they was divorced. I didn't even know till I just so happened look before I was getting ready to shut this um live down. Me usually don't put all that. It's usually the women who, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I feel like they really are divorced, bougie, because men are not very detailed creatures. They don't go that far as to putting something on their Facebook that they're divorced. You know what I mean? So for him to go that far and acknowledge their divorce, and then she not even acknowledging that they're together. I believe they are divorced. It's right there. He put it on his page. He didn't put it's complicated. He put divorced. And she ain't claiming him either. Other than the Facebook page. But you know, women, women to do that because like I said, my aunt, my aunt ain't married to my uncle no more. She's no longer a Houston. And she still got her last name Houston, like she's married to my uncle, and she's not. So women will still hold on to pictures, and, and she's still holding on his last name. So just because you divorce, it don't mean it got to be ugly. It could probably have been a, civ a civil agreement in which they both decided to end the marriage without the nastiness. You get what I'm saying? Let's say it. He good at what he do, and Karen might just go for it. Not saying they all dumb, but I, I do know a few like that. Yeah, that's a possibility, but I won't be surprised. You got to realize, uh, Kenyon done proved he's a lot to deal with, and his ways probably has manifested as he got older. He, he probably, some people, the older they get, they, they bad characteristics and hands but um i just find that kind of i find that kind of ironic that he put divorced on the uh, he so evidently you know they might they they like i said everybody don't have a nasty divorce you got some ex-husband and ex-wives where they could still be facebook friends they still get along and all of that you know what i mean and you know, so, but he put in divorce. And one thing about it, Kenyon proves he loves to, to let everybody know how great he doing. So why would he put divorced if he wasn't divorced? Look at him. Everything he got going great for himself. Cause, cause he's one of the little, you know what? I know this little leprechaun men, little leprechaun men got to be seen. It's like, their ego is supposed to compensate for, for the lack of their height. Something about a little leprechaun man. The little leprechaun man, his, his, his ego is easy to bruise because he's a little leprechaun man. Why why you think Tori Linez, why you think Tori Linez did what he did, even though a lot of people are trying to say he didn't? Let me tell you something. These little leprechaun dudes they don't they don't they don't like they don't like women who challenge them never challenge a little leprechaun man a dude that's under five eight you can forget it so like i said for kenyon he loves the showboat and let everybody know what he's doing so why would he let people know he divorced him and his wife divorced you got to think about it look he's very cocky very arrogant you think he want people to know him him and his wife divorced like he he ain't got his shit together like that 
So he's about, they, they both probably divorced because he likes to show his ass. Like I said, these could be older pictures. Like I said, it could have been a recent agreement for them to recently agree. He probably done got bored. He probably done got bored with his Becky. Probably done got bored. Now, I, I, how can I say this respectfully? I've had men who have told me that sexually Becky's have a different odor. Now, y'all can take that how y'all want it to. <laughs> that that their odor, their their essence is different from ours. And if, if you not to get personal, but if you all of us used to be in locker rooms, all of us have been in locker rooms with Becky's. We have been in, and I don't mean like odors as in they smell nasty. I'm not saying that like like they don't wash, but I've heard men state that their essence is far different from ours. Now, if you ever been in a locker room near any one of them, they just have a different smell, even their hair. If you think about it, even as a black woman, and you ever been near a white man, they, their essence is different from black men. They have a different odor from black men. White men and black men don't smell nothing alike. It's, it's a very different region of an odor. That their secretions is different from ours. And that's that's as I as I as as respectable as I can get it. I'm just going by what other men told me. I got brothers, I got cousins and stuff, and all of that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But for little leprechaun to put it out there like that. He must be not with her. You get what I'm saying? Look at him. He the shortest one in the group. Why the mo? <laughs> he made sure he in the middle. He. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro! Little dudes have like the biggest ego, like for real. Look at he's standing there like I'm GQ. His his arrogance just just rubs my spirit i feel a leprechaun spirit in the building he's just way too cocky for me he he's very cocky he's a very co cocky dude i don't like cocky men i like confident men but i don't like cocky i don't like cocky ass dudes like you know, before before I was married, I was always into guys that was confident but quiet. I don't like loud, obnoxious. Got to brag about how much money. I I, I never was attracted to the loudest guy in the room. Always paid attention to the one that was the most quiet and laid back. I don't I don't like loud guys. I don't I've never liked guys who wear loud shit. You know, loud things like loud designer labels like his whole outfit is gucci down gucci shoes i don't like guy i've never been attracted to men that got to let you know they got money but i i've been more attracted to guys that got on a regular work clothes wearing regular construction boots than i've ever been into guys with suits and gator shoes and and clean you know what i mean exactly agree mocha yep <laughs> i can't stand loud dudes and 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 leprechaun dudes are the loudest 
and now that some of them got these channels you really can't tell them nothing you give a lot a, a, a little leprechaun of voice oh my gosh he think he could talk about anybody all kind of way we got a lot of these little leprechaun dudes who got a channel and now that because they getting so much attention and oh my gosh girl i can't y'all y'all don't let these little leprechauns these little lucky charms y'all don't let them get out of hand knowing he got to use a damn he got to use a step stool to climb up to your bed <laughs> to climb in your bed <laughs> oh my gosh i can't do little leprechaun dudes you got to like get in different sexual positions for them to be able to like angle it right because the little leprechaun dude his reach is kind of um his peak is 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 kind of hard to like reach so for the little leprechaun you have to like arch your back a certain way and you got to kind of you got them you got to give him easy access so you got to kind of position yourself in a manner in which he can reach your spot correctly and, and, and in case you don't know if you were a little leprechaun dude if you get on the top of him and you end up on his chest instead of his stomach <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> if you end up on dude chest instead of his waist you got you got your little leprechaun sis i'm just saying If he getting it from the back and he got to be on one knee, you got your little leprechaun. <laughs> oh my goodness. You got your little leprechaun, sis. Them little leprechaun men. But let me tell you the good thing about a little leprechaun man. Because I don't want to offend any of my sisters in the chat. One of y'all may have a little leprechaun man, so I'm not going to drag him too much. Let me tell you the good thing about little leprechaun man. Little leprechaun man, you could easily buy him anything um, when it comes to Christmas, when it comes to gifts, because little guys, their clothes are cheaper. The little leprechaun, he wears a medium in shirts, or he wears like a small or medium in shirts, Small and medium shirts are less expensive than men who uh, wear extra large and XXL. So that's one good thing about being with a little leprechaun. His clothes will not be that expensive. And little leprechauns, their, their clothes are easier to find. When you have like a, heft, a hefty type of guy like my husband, he wears a, a 2XL. So I got to sometimes go to big and tall. I got to go um you know the certain places to get you know um especially like um polo because i know if i go to polo give him a polo shirt i would not have a problem finding the two x but when it comes to the little leprechaun dude you can buy any you can go to city trends you can go to the cheapest stores to get your little leprechaun man something to wear also the little leprechaun their shoes are cheaper Okay, if he wears like a damn a eight or a nine, his shoes are not going to be that expensive. So that's the good thing about being involved with a little leprechaun. So I'm sure his wife, she saved a lot of money because little leprechaun here, his clothes don't cost that much. I bet he got his suit from Oscar Gosh. <laughs> he got... He got a suit from Oscar Gosh. He got it from Baby Gap. <laughs> he got it. He got it out the little. He get his clothes out the little boys' set. He out the boys' section of Walmart. 
not the men's, the boys. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That, that's a little dude, though. That that's a he, that's a little one. Look how little he is. That's why his ego so big because he's so little. That's why he got the he got to be on a fraternity. He doing all this big extravagant stuff because he don't want nobody knowing how, noticing how little his ass is. That's a little dude right there. He too short for me. I can't do nothing with that. I can't work with that. I can't work with no leprechaun. Instead of, instead of Shaka Khan, Leprechaun, 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 Leprechaun. <laughs> I need to get off of here because I just done cut up too much tonight. Just seeing his little damn midget ass done piss me off. He done, he done, he done killed my vibe. Just seeing his face just brings back all the bad memories. He, he just really done rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know. I may put something on Carly Huge's books. I may put a little $10 so she get her some moon pies and, and um, some damn honey buns and ramen noodles and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm letting God put it in my spirit if I should put something on her commissary. I mean, because me... Working in a jail, let me tell you, jail food is not the business. Jail food is not the business. That's why you got a lot of these inmates and stuff. They be getting um commissary because you get better choices with commissary. But honey buns, moon pies, potato chips, beef jerkies. I don't know. I may I may put a little something on her. I may send her a little ten dollars or something. I ain't sending no more than ten dollars now. She better make it happen off of that. So I got her. Let me see. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna write down her ID number because you got to have all of that information before you could send something. I'll look out, hell. Ain't like she going over. ID number one five three zero zero three. Yeah, I'll send her a little something, something. I may even um, I probably will. I probably might even write her because I'm curious to kind of know what her mind psyche is after everything transpired. So I'm really, really considering writing her because I would like to know her side of the story, like what she's going through has she learned anything so i think i'm a i think that's just what i'm going to do i want to write her i think i'm going to write her because i really want to know how mentally she's doing has she, has she regretted doing this does she now reflect on um wishing she could have handled it in a different way because i really think in all honesty if we kind of really understood her psyche um it, it, women will better be able to understand why it's not worth getting this type of situation. So I think I'm going to definitely go ahead and write her because I really would like to know um, mentally how she's been coping with this. Because it's been, it's been what, since 2006? So it's been, shit, how many years now? I don't know math. So 2006 minus 2022. So it's been 16 years. So by now, she should definitely have a hell of a mindset on this. Or, hell, she may be like Betty Broderick. She may not feel nothing. You know what I mean? She may feel like he, re his fiance regretted it. But, um, yeah, I'm a, I think I'm going to hit her up and write her. And just, uh, I would like to know her opinion. So that's going to be on my assignment, y'all. I'm going to write Miss Huges. And let's see where it goes. There you go, Mocha. That part. That's why I watch the crime shows. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I definitely um, yeah, I, I'm gonna definitely do that. She might have a girlfriend too. 
Hell no. Nah. I ain't sending her girlfriend, no no commissary. You know how many times women in, in, in the correctional facilities, they break up? When I used to work in a jail, women would get back together and break up. They would break up like 20 times within one week. <laughs> how about I'm going to give her 10, and if she loves her woman that much, she better give her woman $5 out of that 10. Because I still got to survive out here. Shit, where she at? She ain't got to worry about paying no rent, no light bill, no water bill. Free room and board. <laughs> Free room and board. But yeah, y'all. So I appreciate y'all ladies for hanging out with me. Even though it is so, so, so late. If any of y'all heard a lawnmower going off in the background, I promise you, nobody is cutting no grass this time of night. My husband is sleeping in the living room right beside me while I'm doing this live. So if y'all heard a lawnmower, all weed eater, anywhere in the background of this content, that's because my husband is sleeping in the living room. So only thing I could do is pray for him. So if you hear it, it I'm just telling y'all, that's that's where the noise is coming from. So um, anyway, I'm going to get ready to shut it down, y'all. And uh, I'm still, my next um, series that I'm going to upload is going to be Unhinged. Another um, a, a part, I think it's, uh, I think I'm doing a part three uh, of Shannon Crawley, who also murdered her husband, her boyfriend's fiance as well and guess what i dug him up and he has a facebook page too and he's remarried too but i'm not going to give y'all that tonight i'm gonna preserve all of that for the next unhinged unhinged when we talk about shannon crawley not only that i looked up her record while she's been incarcerated She's been in several altercations since she's been incarcerated. She's been in fights and all kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to be giving y'all some new information on my next um, upload coming up about Shannon Crawley. We're going to also look into how um, her uh, ex-boyfriend is doing, and he is remarried. Um, also, I also looked up that he has a very bad reputation in his county as far as being one of the nastiest officers um to a lot of the um um, um offenders who have had run-ins with him so it's very interesting but the reason i'm doing this unhinged series because i want women to be more wise and um use more spiritual discernment when it comes to getting involved with these men so you don't end up like another Carly Hughes or you don't end up like a Betty Broderick you don't end up like a Shannon Crawley and like I said this is not just a lesson for y'all but for me as well because like I said I think all women at some point in time we have been challenged we have been deceived and taken advantage of and if you don't get a grip of your emotions you could very well end up like any of these women in this type of situation and you will look back and reflect on your life and realize you made a very terrible decision so anyway i appreciate y'all for hanging out with me tonight i really 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 do because this is a late chat honey this is an unemployed late chat because if I had a job, I would not be up this late. <laughs> this is the unemployed live stream for us unemployed folks, or at least for us who got off tomorrow. So y'all may not be unemployed, but I know I am. So um, nevertheless, I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. It is your girl, your diva in knowledge, Lady Mocha, representing Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Y'all be blessed. Take care. And beware of the little leprechauns. Bye.